Though they may be parted, there is still a chance that they will see. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Talk Time. My guest today is the dynamic Chief Minister of Meghalaya, Mr. Conrad Sangma. Mr. Conrad Sangma, welcome uh, to Talk Time. Thank you, Mr. Uh, it has been eight months since your party won the elections and you formed a coalition government and assumed the hot seat. How has things been, you know, because has it been as easy or as difficult as you might have imagined? Well, uh, number one, I never imagined that I would be um, here because um, I didn't have initial plans to, to contest uh, and I did not contest the ML election. Uh, but uh, based on the situation, I came. And, uh, but yes, um, uh, running a six-party coalition is, uh, is never easy. Yeah. And coalition uh, requires running the coalition, uh, uh, you know, government itself requires a lot of work to be done. But apart from the politics and the coalition politics that is there, uh, the state also, in fact, a uh, lot of economic social challenges um, are there. And uh, yes, um, you know, things are uh, quite uh, difficult in the, in the state of Meghalaya. All small states, in fact, in Northeast yeah. face a financial crunch. And, um, you know, it has been a challenge, but uh, uh, we are working towards it. We are trying to streamline things and hoping that uh, we'll be able to uh, you know, improve the overall governance and delivery mechanism in the state. Right, and, and you know, how difficult has been the lineage for you, you know, because your father, the legendary uh, Purno Sangma, has set a certain standard, certain benchmark, both in politics. So now, has it had an impact on you, both in your professional work, that means your governance delivery, as well as your personal conduct? Yeah, absolutely, I mean, um, uh, you know, when you, uh, compare and uh, and when people do compare, um, you know it's um, it's it's something really a very high benchmark, uh, and uh, it's not easy at all. Yeah. Uh, not just for me, but I think anybody because of just the kind of person he was and the kind of qualities he had and the kind of work that he did, uh, even the administration that he did. Uh, even till today, you will find officials uh, speaking about how good he was at administration. So mm -hmm. it's always a challenge. And yeah. uh, but I keep telling people that please don't compare me. It's, Absolutely, uh, that's what I was going about to come to. It's very difficult uh, to do that, and I think it's uh, only fair to allow me to uh, do what I can do best in, mm -hmm. in the best way possible. Um, and I think the way I look at it is that uh, uh, you know I have been lucky to uh, have worked with Mr. P. S. Sangma. Yeah. Um, and I think I have learned a lot from him and that has been I think the biggest strength for me. Uh, the lineage factor obviously as you said is, a, is an issue but uh, or is something that people talk about. Mm -hmm. But I think the other side of the story also is that uh, um, it was he who trained me and uh, really taught me so many things whether it's in administration or in politics. But, uh, but I'm sure you're not allowing yourself to be weighed down uh, by, by that. Yes, by I, 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 I look at it uh, from what I can do um, as an individual yeah. and as uh, the chief minister of the state. I set my priorities, I set my goals, mm -hmm. and I work in the way uh, which I feel um, I should be doing. So yeah. I, yes, I do not uh, allow that to be something that would uh, bother me. Right. And I look at it in a positive manner. Now, now, now you see, uh like uh, the hot topic of discussion in Meghalaya now, of course, is the Kasi Linears Bill. And the architect of this bill is Mr. Shilla, who is the chief executive member of the Kasi Hills Autonomous District Council, and also, most importantly, your party colleague. Yes. Now, question is, do you think the Kasi identity is really in danger that, you know, just because some Kasi women are marrying non-Kasis, that you have to pass a bill? After all, does it not infringe upon the rights of an individual to choose his or her life partner? Yeah, I mean, if you look at it from an uh, individual's perspective, then yes, it is something that uh, an individual uh, has the right to choose uh, who yeah. he or she uh, mm -hmm. marries. Um, regarding the Kasi lineage bill, it's um, something that has been brought up in the district council. District council is an autonomous body, and they have the rights to, uh, to come up with uh, legislations at their level if they feel appropriate. Yeah. They have the right and the power, the autonomy, to come out with resolutions at their level if they feel. And, uh, but again, at the competent authorities and uh, this, uh, the other, uh, at the state level and at the, at the central level, uh, you know, what kind of stand and whether uh, issues will be uh, in line with laws that are there made by the state and by the gov central government. That will come all into those, play. All those has to no. be seen. So it's, yes. not, it's not as simple as that. But the Kasi Autonomous District Council has uh, decided and they've gone ahead with this. 
So they have the right to do now, that and they said that power. You very rightly said that they are an autonomous body. They have the right to formulate bills. But the question is the bill has gone to the governor for the governor's yes. assent. Yes. Now, as the state government, what will be your advice? Because the governor acts on the advice of the council of ministers. Right. Uh, now, what will be your government's advice to the governor on this? No, when it comes to issues of district council, um, it will depend on the governor on what stand he takes. And uh, depending on uh, what the governor decides to do, I think the state uh, will uh, uh, call a cabinet and will discuss with the other colleagues. We are a coalition and I think it's important to get all the stakeholders involved in this. It's a decision that is quite uh, broad in nature and uh, needs consultation with the individual. So are you going to initiate, because you are a coalition, you have to talk to your all other coalition Absolutely. partners. Uh, are you mooting, are you planning a discussion on this issue? Well, when the time comes, we will discuss about it. Right now, it is still, I, I think it has been sent back to the council and the council has now Again, Once again, has it been yeah. sent back because it has only been passed the other day yeah. and sent to the so, governor? Yeah, so exactly. After that, the governor, it has gone back to the governor the second time. Yeah. So we will see. We'll wait and see what the governor does. And post that, we'll decide how to move forward. Now, now, now uh, the second important thing is that very soon, uh, one might require an outsider, quote unquote, might require an inner line permit to come to Shillong, uh, which is one of the hot tourist destinations. Now, that is also because of a bill, again, passed by the Kasi Hills Autonomous District Council, the inner line permit system. So what what is your government's stand on this inner line issue? You know, again, uh, as I said, um, the council has its right to uh, pass their own, um, you know, bills and their resolutions as they yeah. desire. Um, but I think uh, inner line permit issue, as we have seen in the past, even in the case of Manipur, the state government passed it, but then the central government has not acted on it yet. Yeah. So therefore, uh, it is a very, uh, you know, uh, complex issue, and I don't think, um, you know, uh, it's that easy to answer and say that uh, it's going to happen or not going to happen. But I think at the end of the day, what is important to note and to uh, remember is that, uh, you know, that there's an issue yeah. of uh, illegal immigration. Uh, and I think that is where the crux of the whole thing is. And I think um, my government or any other government uh, or the center or the di district council, I think everybody uh, looks towards ensuring that uh, uh, this kind of illegal immigration does not to play, take place. So the mechanism to stop that is something that uh, I think needs more consultation. And uh, whether ILP is the best way, it's one of the ways. But is it the best way? Well, we have to debate about it. And I think because this was something that was made 100 years back. So therefore, uh, you know, I think uh, we'll need to discuss uh, on figuring out what would be the best legislation and best policy to tackle this issue of illegal immigration. Because it looks like people have been provided by one option, two options, yeah. and, they, and they go for those one or two options. Uh, but I think if we go and broaden it out and look at other options also and policies that are being done in the rest of the world, maybe you know, we'll be able to come out with a stronger and better policy that will be more appropriate for our state. And our state. You see, uh, you had made a very clear-cut statement, your government, that you are against a citizenship amendment yes. proposal, amendment bill, for which you have gone, got uh, received a lot of uh, appreciation by different organizations and some who are opposing the bill. Now, uh, can you explain to my viewers as to why, on what ground, have you opposed the uh, citizenship amendment bill? Well, I think uh, it's, it's nothing, uh, no rocket science in it. Uh, it's as simple as, uh, uh, as saying that for us, um, it's a question of any... Uh, outsider or uh, on the country that is, yeah. you know, um, you know, any immigrant from uh, outside uh, is one only, you know. So there is no question of any uh, religious color to it, I should say. So, they, so basically, therefore, you were therefore, therefore, therefore if, if somebody tells me that the Bangladeshi is going to come in, um, I think, uh, you know, for us, for our state and our people, I think uh, Bangladesh is a Bangladeshi and he's a citizen of Bangladesh. So he or she should be in Bangladesh, simple as that, and uh, not in India. So I think uh, we're just, as a plain, simple um, thought and idea that uh, uh, we are against illegal immigration, so uh, there is no religious color being added to that, mm -hmm. and, and that should uh, go so, all across. So being a constituent of the NDA yes. uh, doesn't bother you in, on these well, issues I, I where... Been, I have been very clear, even from my election uh, point of view, we were always tied to the BJP every time and uh, yeah. many political parties uh, have kept uh, making this an election agenda saying that NPP is B team of BJP. B team, yes. And, uh, you know, we work with the BJP. There is no doubt about it. You know, we have been working from my late father's time with the NDA. So there is no doubt about the fact that we work. And I've been very clear to our electorate and all the public yeah. 
that even though we are working with them doesn't mean we believe in every single ideology that is there. You know, there is an aspect of governance and development which we need to look into. And we feel that the development uh, strategy and the idea and the governance that uh, Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi has, it goes in line with our development ideas and perspectives. And yes, we are two different political parties. And so we do have divergent views. But that does not mean that it stops us from working for the people. And wherever necessary uh, to give that view and come out and take a stand, our party will never shy from that. So what is in the interest of our people and the state and the country, that is what we keep in front. Now, there's, there seems to be a lot of pull factor towards your party. A lot of people wants to join NPP. You know, uh, we have seen Congress leaders joining your party. In Mizoram, we have seen even a BJP vice president of the state unit joining your party on the eve of the elections. Uh, well, what is the pull factor? What is the secret that people want to come and join, leave the other parties and join? And uh, is Mr. Didi Lapang, who has just again sided, I would not say joined, but sided with your government, you have made him the advisor, uh, is he likely to be your looks of a candidate uh, in Shillong in 2019? Uh, the two questions. So, so the first one, of course, uh, um, I mean, there is nothing or a pull factor or, or anything. I think there are two aspects to um, our political party. Uh, number one is that uh, you know it is uh, the P. Sangma brand, I should say, and uh, just his ideas and his image um, attracts a lot of people because there's a factor of trust in it. If Conrad were not to be P. Sangma's son, and he had floated a political party and gone to Mizoram. I don't think anybody would really uh, want to you know, uh, align, most probably. But the fact that uh, it has been a party that started, was started by Mr. P.S. Sangma, I think that adds a huge brand value to it. That's number one. Number two, uh, based on his ideology, and as I, I keep telling people, you know, I, ideas will always live on and always remain. P.S. Sangma has put in this seed and this idea of a Northeast uh, platform. Yeah. And uh, though, even though he's not with us today, but his idea is still continuing. And, uh, and we are voicing the opinions and ideas of the Northeast. And we've been very clear that uh, there are a lot of issues and agendas that might not always go in line with Delhi. And therefore, political party that does think about the Northeast is absolutely necessary. And there is a vacuum for it. And that is what we've been stressing on from day one. And that is what we have been telling the people. And I'm happy to see that people are connecting to this ideology of Having a platform, that does not mean that we are against uh, Delhi, you know. It's just that there are some issues yeah. and the importance that we need to get, sometimes we don't get. So and you need so, a pan northeast party. And we are. That's what we are. And we are creating that. Today we have seven MLAs in Arunachal. We are part of the government there. We are part of the government in, um, in, in Nagaland. Manipur. We have two MLAs uh, who are advisors to the chief minister. We have four MLAs and ministers in uh, Manipur government. We have two MLAs. Uh, we have 20 MLAs here in Meghalaya with the government here, leading the government. So clearly, we have about four states where we are right now, we're having a presence. And as you mentioned correctly, in Mizoram also, uh, we have been working for the past one year, one and a half years in Mizoram. So we are, we are hoping for uh, positive results from Mizoram also. You know, the allegations against successive governments in the past is that, you know, they had kept the issue of relocating the sweepers colony or the Harijan colony residents to another location. I'm asking you this very, very local question because Shillong had witnessed a, almost a month long or more than a month long uh, massive agitation uh, that, had, that was quite early on uh, when you took over as the chief minister. Now, what is the latest? Are you relocating the residents to another place? Because these are ticklish issues uh, that will keep festering again and again Absolutely. and disrupt the overall peace in the state. Absolutely. So what are you doing about it now? Yes, this is a very, very long pending issue and uh, there have been a lot of uh, claims and counter claims that have been done um, from both uh, all the stakeholders and all the people who are involved in it and uh, for the first time in fact of course after this happened and it was a very sudden thing that happened uh, in the state of course it didn't last for a month but uh, yeah. about 10 days uh, we were very lucky that in about four to five days or six days I should say we managed to uh, you know talk to everybody and somehow get people on the board on board to uh, you know, to give us the gov government the time to uh, find a solution yeah. to this issue. So from the government side, uh, what is most important is to ensure that uh, we do take all stakeholders on board. And uh, extreme and detailed consultation as well as detailed study of all facts, you know, from all stakeholders is being done in micro detail. And there are a lot of documents that are coming out now. 
And as soon as the uh, high-powered committee, which is chaired and yeah. which was formed and chaired by the Deputy Chief Minister, uh, as soon as they submit a report to us, and as I said, it's a very, very detailed, we, uh, only when we started working on things did we realize how many claims and counterclaims and what kind of documents are there okay. and how many cases have taken place. So it is really opening up a m much more than we expected. So therefore, uh, it, it will be, uh, uh, it will be uh, appropriate to say that uh, you know, it will be something that will require us time to at least study all the details. So, so, so in, uh, do you, you know, at the end the of the day, details. do you, uh, in simple terms, do you expect a solution to the satisfaction yes. of both sides? You see, uh, it, it will never happen. Uh, as a, a, a something that a solution that will make everybody hap happy May not would, would be the best. I would be the mm. happiest person mm. if that would be po ever possible. But uh, we clearly know that it might not be uh, possible, us to, possible for us to make everyone happy. But as I said, we want to stick to the principles, we want to stick to facts, uh, and based on the facts that we receive and see, we would like to make decisions that would minimize, I should say, inconvenience and any kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, right. any inconvenience to anybody. NPP is going to be the kingmaker in the Mizoram elections this time. You are fielding, you said you will be fielding 25 candidates in the 40-member we, we, we are We are working on it. Uh, I think it's... Uh, you are, are you working on to become the kingmakers? It's Obviously. No, no uh, yeah. Uh, well, it's something that I can't say. Yeah. But uh, we are just working towards maximizing the number of seats we get. Manip, uh, Mizoram is a... Um, is a, uh, as all states are, uh, very different in its political scenario. It's not uh, something that you can see the politics in Meghalaya and say it's going to be like, like that. Uh, every state is unique and the political dynamics are very unique. The, the people's mindset is very different and uh, the way they see politics and politicians is also very different. So therefore, uh, it is very unfair for me to just simply uh, say that, well, we can, we'll win this many seats. Uh, it's a challenge, let me just say. Mm. And uh, But I hope that uh, NPP will do well. Uh, I hope that people will see the kind of vision and the ideas we have for Mizoram and for the Northeast. And I hope that will click and uh, we will get some seats. And yes, maybe we might be uh, the kingmakers. That's something I cannot comment on right now. Right, but it's a very interesting situation. There is the BJP, which is a part of NEDA, which rather floated the NEDA. There is the NPP, which is a constituent of the NEDA. There is also the MNF, which is one of the major opposition parties, which is also a constituent unit of the NEDA. Yes. So there is the BJP, MNF, and NPP, and yes. each fighting the elections as rivals. Yes. Uh, so uh, it's a, it's as. Uh, you know, it's a very interesting scenario to yeah, and it, that it, can unfold. Actually, it is. It is interesting, and um, you know, keeping in mind the size of the constituency, and uh, if you see the politics and the election results uh, in the last uh, election, uh, you will see approximately about fourteen or fifteen candidates. They won by less than uh, six, seven hundred votes. You know, uh, in the election, there were some candidates who won by fourteen votes in the last election in Mizoram. So yes, it's a very, very tight contest and few hundred votes here and there can make a huge difference. So therefore, um, uh, let us see how it goes. But as I said, the factors internally in every constituency are very different. So uh, simply saying that and applying a set formula and saying that, well, NPP, UDP, uh, NPP MNF and BJP, NEDA components here and, uh, and you know, the uh, ruling yeah. side here, this, this formula doesn't apply throughout the uh, state. Every constituency is uh, very unique and people really do look at uh, the individual candidates, uh, you know, um, yeah. ca uh, uh, is a, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah. No, 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 no. You, you look quite relaxed. You recently played a game of football, maybe after many, many years. And I saw you singing at a recent media conference. And you were quite at ease, you know, singing. Do you practice singing at home or uh, what are you? Are you a, a proper singer? Are you a bathroom singer? What are you actually? No, I, I keep joking with people that... Uh, that we used to play music before, but now we only face the music. <laughs> so it's not, uh, yeah. it's, it's very different now. But nonetheless, um, uh, yes, music is, uh, you can say, uh, uh, has always been uh, something that I enjoy. Yeah. And it's not just me, I think you'll find it in Northeast everywhere. A lot of people, and Shillong especially is a, is a you know, rock capital, uh, you know, in True. one way of the nation. Yeah. And so therefore music has always been an integral part. It allows you to connect with the youth, uh, it's something that I have a lot of interest in. 
Um, as a singer, I'm a really bad singer. So if you but what is me, what is the genre that interests you the most in music? Uh, no, no, I, I all kinds of uh, mm -hmm. music. I go from uh, all different uh, you yeah. know areas. So therefore, uh, uh, it's, it's it's just something that I do whenever I get a chance. I play the guitar sometimes. I play okay. the piano sometimes. It's more of a relaxation. And obviously, when we have long days and we're moving the car for. Hours and hours, right. that's the only thing you can do. Right, so that's absolutely. What it is. Finally, uh, Mr. Conrad Sangma, what would you like to tell the viewers of Northeast Live to end this interview? Well, I think uh, I have always been a firm believer, as I said, uh, of the Northeast. I think Northeast has got so much potential. Uh, and yet, uh, I sometimes feel that uh, our people of Northeast uh, do, uh, you know, look at ourselves and say that, well, you know, I may not be able to. So we underestimate ourselves, yeah. I feel, sometimes. And I think um, if I were to tell anything to the people of Northeast and the, uh, especially the youth of Northeast, I think we really need to, you know, start coming out. And uh, we need to uh, show the world that we are second to none. And I keep telling our youth that, you know, that a lot of them look at uh, Northeast and say that, you know, well, reservation and subsidy and all these things. And I think uh, those things will be there and it's based on policy. But I think it's very important for our youth and our people to start really looking at ourselves and say that, well, we should compete with the rest of the world on the same platform. And yes, those uh, policies, subsidies will be there. Let us look at them as bonus. Um, but I think the competitiveness is something um, and the hard work is something that uh, I'm not saying people are not hardworking, they are, but mm -hmm. we need to uh, get into that mindset of being competitive. And you think the Northeasterners can do it? Absolutely. We can do it in the Northeast. On that positive note, Mr. Conrad Sangwa, thank you very much. Thank you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you.